There's absolutely no evidence that President Biden had anything to do with uh, the federal charges brought against President Trump. There's no question so, that but, the, the White House was informed about what was happening. But, Did we spend this amount of time scrutinizing Biden's pick? I mean, we can talk about Rachel, the Assistant Secretary of HHS, whatever pronoun he or she decides to use. So, I've also questioned vaccines multiple times, and I think they should be questionized. For instance, why is America highest in autism? No credible expert or study has shown a link between vaccines and autism. Welcome so. back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we're going to be watching Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen absolutely cook. Another one of these bot mainstream media journalists on NPCs meet the press. Now, this one is very interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, being that I always like to watch the conduct of these sort of mainstream media anchors because I am becoming more and more convinced by the day that they are actually not human. But we'll get more into that as we go. Furthermore, it's interesting to see his take on Trump's cabinet picks, but also towards the end, this one gets very, very spicy and she starts really hitting the panic button. So with that, let's get into it. And joining me now is Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma. Senator Mullen, welcome to Meet the Press. Thanks for having me on, Kristen. Well, thank you for being here. I want to start with former Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who, of course, President-elect Trump, as we just said, announced this week was his pick for attorney general. You have said you trust Mr. Trump's decision making and naming Gates, but you have been critical of Gates as well. Here's a little bit of what you've had to say. We had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. And he walked up to him as Chris, you know, now Governor Chris, you know, and she, he said, man, she's a fine and you can put the B word in place there. This is the type of individual Matt Gates is. So, Senator, you clearly have questions about Matt Gates's character, but do you believe that Matt Gates is qualified to serve as attorney general? You know, there's no question that Matt Gates and I have had our differences, and that's uh, uh, that's no secret. Uh, moving forward, I do um, I do respect President Trump's uh, the right to appoint to these individuals, but underneath Article 2, Section 2, Congress has to advise and consent, and Matt Gates is going to go through the same scrutiny as every other individual, and I'm going to give him a fair shot, just like every individual, and at the end of the day, uh, the Senate has to confirm him. I do think it's a very very tough role. Um, I've got a tough situation that I've got to set my personal opinions, and they're really not opinions. I got to uh, I got to set my personal uh, uh, situation with Matt to the side and look at the facts. If he's qualified, he's qualified. Uh, I be quite frank. I didn't even know he was an attorney until after um, he was appointed attorney general, and I had to do my research on him. Uh, and I know that's crazy because I served with him, but I just never did the dig to find out actually uh, his his actual uh, degree, what it was in. I want to ask you about his views. Here's a little bit of what Matt Gates had to say last year about the very law enforcement agencies that he is poised to be tapped to oversee. Take a look. We either get this government back on our side or we defund and get rid of, abolish the FBI, CDC, ATF. DOJ, every last one of them, if they do not come to heal. Senator, do you support getting rid of the FBI, the DOJ under any circumstances? No, I, I, I actually agree with what Matt was saying there. As hard as that is for me to say that, I actually agree with him because what he's saying is that they were, he's going to come to the side of the American people and quit playing politics. The DOJ and the FBI has been politicized. There's no question about it. We've seen what they've done to President Trump. We've seen the attacks that they continue to go after him with. The DOJ is 100% weaponized. You saw the FBI and the fake uh, Russia, uh, Russia hoax. Uh, you saw the FBI uh, um, uh, shielding the Biden family and shielding the laptop from the American people during the election. If they don't want to come back and do their job, and their job is to keep America safe, to watch over the America's freedom through DOJ, taking, making sure the American justice system is run smoothly and leaving politics out of it but they haven't lately and if they don't want to come back and get focused on what the american people's yep. mandate was for them then we do need to revamp the system and say hey maybe we've got it wrong so i, I don't disagree with what matt was saying there well and worth noting of course hunter biden has now been convicted on federal charges the charges that were brought against president-elect trump were brought Absolutely. by but individual mind, grand we had to juries go through a process me, to get there let, let me ask you broadly though do you support the president-elect telling his attorney general to prosecute to go after people he considers to be his political enemies 
Guys, wanted to give a quick reminder that Christmas is coming up and for a limited time only on the Reality Based Store for the next few weeks, you will be able to shop our Christmas catalog. We have got some make Christmas great again merch. And also we've just designed these great corduroy hats that are very comfortable. And last but not least, our very own MAGA Wars design. We have got Trump, Vance, Tulsi, Elon, and even Vivek Ramaswamy as Master Yoda. You must unlearn what you have learned. Unburdened by what has been. These will be the perfect Christmas gifts if you know anybody based or if you want to just trigger a lib. So realitybasedstore.com guys, you can find the links and shop the catalog below. Let's get back to the video. I, the president didn't say that. That's that's being taken completely out of context. Um, and, and and President Trump hasn't been the one that weaponized the DOJ to go after his political enemies. President Trump did not do that when he was in office the first four years. He could have clearly done that against the Clintons if he wanted to. He didn't. Who did weaponize the 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 DOJ was the Biden administration. We saw them continuously going after President Trump, treating him completely different. Let's go think about the classified records that was kept at Mar-a-Lago versus the classified uh, documents that was kept in the garage of, uh, yeah. of, of Biden and how the different reports read. It, they, it is no question they were treated different. Now, who has weaponized the political or the DOJ is the Democrats. Yeah. And no one can deny what they did to President Trump S with four years well, underneath Biden. S S Senator, it's worth noting there's absolutely no evidence that President Biden had anything to do with uh, the federal charges brought against President-elect Trump. But are you comfortable, Garland was well, are you comfortable with law Trump enforcement there, agencies? Or by, pre by President Biden. But, and there's no question but, that they, he, the White House was informed about what was happening But, there. Senator, you, you have said we're too good of a country to have the Justice Department go after political opponents. Are you comfortable Agreed. with the DOJ doing exactly what you're saying you oppose? If the DOJ is willing to take a hard look at themselves and say, hey, we've got it wrong, there's some leadership positions that have to change. The people that made these decisions have to go and get the DOJ focused on what their priorities are supposed to be. And that's to be yeah. making sure the Constitution of the United States is equal for every person out there. And if the DOJ is willing to do that and capable of doing that, and they did it for decades, by the way, for decades, yeah. if Look. they're able to get back and say, hey, we got it wrong and admit wrong, then hey, yeah, let's do it. I tell people all the time, I've never fired a single individual for making a mistake. I will fire you if you can't admit that you made a mistake. And the DOJ has made multiple mistakes and so has the FBI. All right, well, and again, Senator, let, let me just ask you bottom line here. Have you decided at this point whether you're gonna vote for Matt Gates? Oh, absolutely not. I haven't made a decision for uh, who I'm going to vote for with any one of these nominations. As I said, I'm going to treat everybody the same and do my constitutional duty, and that is to go through advice and consent. And that means background. That means we're going to be our, yep. we're going to be doing everything we can to verify the individuals, know who they are, and put them in the pl best place to succeed to put America first. And I understand the American people. We have an agenda but, yeah. and a mandate from the American people because President Trump won well, the popular vote and overwhelmingly electoral vote. And they yeah. want to have a new direction for this country. And we agree with that. So I actually like that answer, whatever his difference is with Matt Gates, because this actually demonstrates something that the left has completely lost the ability to do, which is to compartmentalize. He's actually able to say, I don't really like the guy. He's got X and Y character flaw. However, just because I don't like him personally doesn't mean I'm going to say he's not fit for the job. And I'm not just going to disparage everything that comes out of his mouth. I'm going to take a look at all of the different ideas and judge them based on their merit, not based on my emotionally triggered reaction. Isn't that kind of refreshing to hear? I mean, the logic from the left for the longest time, especially on these mainstream media platforms, is Donald Trump wants to protect the economy and the border. He must be a fascist. Donald Trump Loves cute puppies, while well, cute puppies must be bad. I mean, they have literally never given him credit for anything, and they have a complete and utter inability to detach their emotions from their reason. But anyways, my prediction here is that Mark Wayne will definitely end up voting for Matt Gates because he's a smart guy, he's a politician, and if he wants to play politics, then he must see that that is the way that the Republican Party is going. Matt Gates is firmly positioned to be a very, very important member of the party for a long time to come. I mean, him and J.D. Vance and Trump Jr. are all very tight and Vivek as well. I mean, this is a very significant click. This is the vanguard of the new Republican Party. And all of these guys 
will have very significant roles in the party in the future. And all of those guys are 46 years old and under, and Mark Wayne is 47. So I would just imagine that this is a movement that he would want to be a part of. And he seems suited to it. I mean, I don't know everything about the guy's worldview, but he comes from a blue collar business background. He had plumbing and farming companies and he did well with those and they sold for a tasty profit. And he's definitely not opposed to getting his hands dirty as demonstrated by what I think he is most famous for on the internet. This following clip. What um, Mr. O'Brien just said about right to work states versus uh, forced work states. I sure remember working pretty hard in long hours. Pretends like he's self-made. What a clown, fraud. Always has been, always will be. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me, any place, any time, cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, stop it. Is that your right. solution? Every problem. No, no, sit down. Oh, sit down. Okay. You're, you're, no, you're a United States Senator. Sit down. Oh, okay, okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Hold Sam. it. Hold it. If hold we can't, no, I have the mic. Said. I'm sorry. This is hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> this is a hearing. And God knows the American people have enough of contempt. But Congress, let's not I don't make like it worse. Thugs and you, you have, and you have I don't like you because you just described yourself. Yeah, hold it. You have yeah. the mic. Yeah. You have time. All make right. Your statement. Then let's do this because I did challenge you and I accepted your challenge, and you went quiet. No, I didn't go quiet. I was. No, I was no, no, you challenged me to a cage match, no, 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 acting no, no, like a twelve-year-old schoolyard bully. Excuse me. Hold, hold it. No, excuse me. I, have the I mic. will say. I will say exactly. Senator what Mullen, I have the mic. You have questions on any economic issues, anything that said, go for it. We're not here to talk about physical abuse. You brought We're not talking in. about, of course and, I did. And let me, tell, let me show you his hearing, because I want to I want to expose this thug to who he is. And Could you not point to me? That's disrespectful. All right. I don't care about respecting you at all. I, respect I don't respect you respect. at all. So communist Bernie Sanders was completely out of order stopping that there. I mean, why not just let them juke it out in the middle? Words have consequences. I mean, I personally don't see a problem with doing what they do in Taiwan and just having regular all-in brawls in the middle of parliament. How about Ukraine? When somebody says something that they don't like, they just smack them in the face and then they reconvene, continue the speech, and then he says something he doesn't like again and he smacks him again. <laughs> So, food for thought there. But guys, one thing I really don't like about Mark Wayne is that as far as I can tell, he doesn't have a middle name. I mean, seriously, no middle name, but his parents have just gone right ahead and decided to make his first name Mark Wayne. And now we have to all deal with the consequences. So anyways, onto the next bit now where it spices up a little bit. Before we get there, guys, do not forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are getting value from what we do here. I wanna ask you about some of these other picks. You're of course a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, which will hold confirmation hearings into Trump's pick for Defense Secretary Fox News host, Pete Hegseth. You said on Thursday, you're absolutely planning to vote for him but since then, allegations of sexual assault in 2017 have surfaced, including that he paid the accuser as part of a non-disclosure agreement, Senator. That's according to documents obtained by The Washington Post. Mr. Hegseth's attorney, we want to say, denied the allegations of misconduct. He was never charged. But do you think that this matter could sink Pete Hegseth's confirmation? 
It, it could, but let me tell you about Pete. Is he's an individual that served 20 years in in the service. Is an honorable uh, a discharge veteran who served um, as a, a as a, a combat individual that walked into Afghanistan and Iraq. Has two bronze stars. Highly decorated combat veteran that is a civilian today. He's a major, and he fits the role of defense uh, at Secretary of Defense. I think he's Just, a good pick. Yeah. But once again, uh, as, as allegations come out, we'll figure out if as, as the Senate moves forward with the advice and consent to the President of the United States and doing our constitutional duties, yeah. we'll figure out if he can get confirmed or and, not. And, 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 and I do think that Pete's a good pick for this position. And just to follow up with you, because you had said you absolutely plan to vote for him. Do you still absolutely plan to vote for him? Well, I, I, I do. I, as of right now, I start with yes. Okay. Uh, but can I be moved off of that? I, I'm, I'm sure. Everybody starts at some point. Some people start at dead even. Some people start at a yes. Some people start at a no. Uh, but I start at a yes, and it's going to take some for, some movement for me to move off of that. Let's talk about President-elect Trump's pick for HHS Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Of course, uh, he has said he believes that no vaccine is safe and effective. You have been on the record uh, defending the efficacy of vaccines. Are RFK's views on vaccines a deal breaker for you, Senator? No, I absolutely um, appreciate uh, Bobby Kennedy taking a hard look at the vaccines. There are some questions that had to be made, and and I appreciate some of the scrutiny that's going through there. I think Bobby can answer all those. I've had multiple conversations with him. I've sat down and had a had a, a long conversations with him, and I actually find the guy extremely intelligent when it comes to this stuff. And some of this stuff does raise a lot of questions. But I do got a question for you. The Democrats are spending so much time talking about the scrutiny yeah. of President Trump's picks, and yet we didn't spend. Did we spend this amount of time scrutinizing Biden's pick. I mean, we can talk about Rachel, the assistant secretary of HHS. Uh, I think that's a pretty controversial pick from whatever pronoun he or he, he or she decides to use. We talk about Sam, the assistant secretary for or executive in underneath energy, energy of uh, uh, secretary yeah. of energy. And uh, the individual was it was arrested multiple times for stealing luggage off of off of conveyor belts inside airports. Senator, and I didn't see this same type of scrutiny that the Democrats used on these individuals picks. There's been a lot of picks. I mean, we can talk about Pete Buttigieg. We, yeah, Is he really qualified wait, to be on, part Senator, of let's transportation? Stay, but I don't see the same people giving the scrutiny here. Let, let's we, we scrutinize all of those picks robustly. But, Senator, l let me just go back to this, because you've been on the record saying that you do believe vaccines are safe and effective. Uh, you're not concerned about uh, RFK Jr. overseeing the largest health agency uh, in the land? I have, I have said that there's, there's some positives to vaccinations. I've also questioned vaccines multiple times, and I think they should be questionized. For instance, why is America highest in autism? What is causing that? Is it our diet, or is it some of the stuff we're putting in our our, our children's system? We used to be it used to be uh, almost not even heard of. Then it went from one to ten thousand, then the one to five thousand, one to two thousand. In some races right now, one out of every thirty-six kids uh, at the, by the age of three have developed some form of autism. What is causing that? And if it is a vaccine, Vaccines. There's no nothing wrong with actually taking a that, hard look and finding is that's what's causing it. Okay. Is it something else that we're putting in our systems? We do know we're not as healthy as we should be right now. But, we're the most developed country in the world, so all things should be on the table. And I and if that's scrutinizing vaccinations, then that is exactly where we need to go. Senator, I just have to say, no credible expert or study has shown a link between vaccines and autism. So I just just want to be on the record with that very quickly. Exactly, though, but when we're we almost ask out of time. about the studies for the vaccines, yeah. Kristen, I know, but when we ask ask about the vaccines and the study that was done specific for autism, it's extremely vague. And in fact, there's not been a direct study on each individual vaccine but, if okay. it has a possibility of causing it. They have yeah. an overall reaching view, and I've yeah. asked these questions because I sat on health in the House and yeah. on the Senate, and we have got almost no answers on that. Again, th there's just no scientific evidence for that. So she was very, very keen to stop that conversation. I mean, I don't think she anticipated that it would go there. But just on these mainstream anchors, I am genuinely beginning to think that these guys are all like these MK Ultra plants. I mean, the first key giveaway is the eyes. You look at the eyes and they tell a story. Really not much going on behind them. And secondly, they're like programmed bots in that they all just run the same playbook. They'll ask a question and then as soon as they start responding, if they say something that they don't like, then they're just like eager, just keen to get in there like a Chinaman at a wet market and they can't let them 
finish their sentence. And then when they do get in there, it's always the same lines. Oh, well, actually there's no scientific evidence for that. Or we're just gonna let the viewers know that there's no evidence for that. Or actually that's been debunked. I mean, it's so funny. These anchors just all of a sudden become the experts on absolutely everything. They get the final word. They are the arbiters of what is true and what is false. The only thing is that they never actually back up what they're saying with any facts or even give a justification. But that was funny to watch because I definitely don't think that she was expecting that to go there. And she was expecting him to actually champion RFK's view on vaccines. And that's why she started scrambling and was keen to jump in there and was keen to cut him off and debunk him with all of her knowledge. We do know we're not as healthy as we should be right now. We're the most developed country in the world. So all things should be on the table. And I- But we know why that is, don't we? Because Pfizer, and the other big pharma donors would be absolutely livid that this conversation was aired and they're already having a rough time seeing as the RFK is about to come and disrupt the gravy train. So anyways, guys, hope you did enjoy that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to check out the reality-based store, Christmas catalog and the likes. It's going to be right below there for you. And also, if you'd like to watch another video right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.